Hi guys, it's Eclipse here and today we're going to be looking at the new free tank that you can pick up in-game as part of an operation that came in recently. Obviously you have to pick up 85 points in this last week and then you can pick up this tank on screen. Now, when I first looked at the tank, you know, being a tier 6, I thought... Uh, it's probably going to be one of those lackluster premium tanks that just doesn't quite have enough uh, to want you to actually play tier 6, especially if you're used to playing tier 10 and you're used to playing the high tiers of World of Tanks. This tank actually surprised me a lot. You know, it's one of the tanks that came into the game a long, long time ago as part of, I think, the war stories on World of Tanks. It was well, like one of the first ones, very, very similar to the Snake Bite. This tank is a tier 6 heavy tank. And when I first looked at it, it was the Churchill 7 kind of, it's it's that that kind of look on the standard tech tree. And I thought, you know what, do I really want to go through playing the tier 6 Churchill 7 again? Like considering the tank wasn't particularly amazing in the first place. And yeah, I just felt that it was probably more than likely going to be pretty bad. But when I actually had a few games in it, I decided to give it a go. You know, it looks pretty cool, and when you consider its armour actually works in-game for some reason, especially if you angle. Now, in this tank, pretty much I have to angle if you want to have some good games in it. Um, this tank can definitely pull off some really good games, and we're going to be looking at a couple gameplays after the end of this kind of stats review and, and review section of the video. If you want to skip ahead now, then you can, but we're going to go over everything you kind of need in the tank and also the commander setup you probably want uh, for a tank like this or very similar tank. Now in terms of the armour model, we can have a look. Uh, it's not got particularly the best armour in the game if you're just flat on or, or frontally um, if you're just looking at them straight on they pretty much have quite weak armor um, but it, as soon as you start to angle in these tanks because they are so flat it means that you can actually have some really good effective armor although you know you can't come up against tier sevens um, very well with premium ammunition they more than likely are going to be able to go straight through you and therefore you know you've got to be situational move about have a few different places in the map to be able to you know retreat to and maybe just use that kind of um uh, mindset of just being able to put yourself in the best position because that's kind of where this tank becomes uh, super super useful and uh, it's a tank that can rack up damage very very quickly now in terms of why that is it's because the gun on the tank is absolutely amazing um, this thing has really really good accuracy for a heavy tank 18.52 rounds a minute you reload in roughly about three seconds so you can continually just track your enemies lock them down in place and just absolutely ruin their game um, what i found with this tank you want to be actually aiming at those weak points of the enemy tanks with your standard rounds if you're trying to make a bit of money now obviously if you're just trying to mark the tank or you're trying to have the best game possible in the tank and you want to fire a little bit more premium the premium pen is fantastic and it's going to be more than enough than you'll need to come up against um, the tanks that you can face in this thing now, one of you might be thinking, right, well, OK, I've got 202 millimeters of penetration. What happens if I come up against a tier eight in game like a Tiger 2? Well, that's never going to happen. This tank has plus one, minus two matchmaking. So this tank has preferential matchmaking. For those of you who do not know, that means that it can only meet tier sevens as a tier six. So instead of having the plus two, minus two, this tank will only meet tier 7 so the maximum tier you're going to be meeting is things like the tiger they're probably going to be the things that you hate most fighting in this tank because they just have the penetration to go straight through the front of you they've got the penetration to go through the top of your turret they've got basically enough to just demolish a tank and they reload fairly fast so if you're coming up against a tiger you may want to fire some premium rounds in order to go straight through them and just pull back around a corner or just use the map to your advantage to be able to nullify if any kind of things like that happen in game. As far as kitting the tank out um, in terms of you know 
prioritising certain upgrades on the tank and also putting on some equipment that will actually make your tank slightly better. What I did go with for this tank was actually I put on view range because um, although you can put on the traction system and the advanced powertrain for increasing that max speed of just 20 kilometers an hour which is slow for a tank don't get me wrong it's not going to be you know speeding around the map like the vanguards can um, but this tank you know it needs to focus on getting that dpm out and tracking opponents and just locking them down just have having a, a really good time of just plowing rounds straight into the side of tanks straight into the front of them if you're using those premium rounds and spotting opponents so that's why I've gone with advanced optics. The spotting on this tank, as you can see in the top right corner, is 431.42 meters. I have got a few crew perks that we'll go over in just a second, um, but that is more than enough at tier six to be able to spot, you know, outspot opponents, even light tanks. And that's what I found with this tank is is you if you can combine your damage and your assistance damage you can have some fantastic times uh, when you come up against the tier sevens in the game i also find that coming up against those tier sevens is actually probably your best bet in this tank because um when you're in a tier six game where it's uh, you know you're coming up against tier fives it does kind of feel a little bit annoying to play because by the time you've actually got there the fight is usually over Whereas in those tier 7 games, they last a little bit longer. People have a little bit more hit points. So when you come up and sneak up against people, uh, you've got a little bit more time to dish out that DPM, which you have like 2,000 nearly um, in this tank. And yeah, it's it's really, really good. And I certainly enjoyed this tank. Um, we'll go into the commander real quick just to show you a kind of build that I use in it. This is my um, Conqueror crew. Um, so it's not kitted out especially to the bulldog but i will highlight why these perks will actually work really well obviously we've gone with six cents as a standard you know it's one of those big ones you need you need it pretty much if you're going to play world war ii in cold war it's a bit of a trade-off you don't necessarily need six cents um but i run it anyway then we've got um, born leader this is obviously to increase that crew effectiveness um, or skill effectiveness so every single skill you pick after getting the born leader will actually be 10% more effective so say if it was rapid loading you've got a 10% increase to gun reload speed that means it will actually be 11% once you pick born leader and also crew performance I think that that will actually just increase your uh, amount of XP that you get in game I'm not entirely sure but it also so might be the fact of it will repair your tracks 10% faster not entirely sure what the crew performance bit is um, but it's either the actual XP that you get or it's um, the actual speed of certain things like uh, your um, your track repair speed now in terms of other things I went with rapid loading get that DPM up even further which is really really good I certainly would recommend that then I went with accuracy steady aim because you know it's one of those that you probably want to have that on the tank because, you know, why would you not want to 10% increase to accuracy on all aspects of accuracy? So that's what I went with. Then we went with snapshot. That's just to increase your accuracy during turret rotation. Obviously, you want to be able to hit the light tanks that are coming round towards you um, because obviously you don't have the best mobility in a tank like the British Bulldog uh, on World of Tanks anyway. Um, certainly want to be able to hit them when they're kind of out traversing you and, and making sure you hit your shots in the correct uh, way. Then I went with six cents. That's just uh, obviously we've mentioned and then we went with situational awareness that's to boost up that view range just a little bit further to be able to get that spotting damage as well and then furthermore we went with muffled shot and camo you don't have to go with these i mean for a heavy tank solely build you probably want to be going with um maybe clutch braking to increase the whole traverse so that you don't get out traversed by light tanks as easily um, but then again it's up to you really uh, i mean i use this on a variety of different tanks so that's why i kind of make it a bit more versatile using the camouflage expertise and muffled shot just to increase my camo and, and use the spotting mechanics and then finally the most important well one of the most important ones and that is uh, track mechanic that should get up your track repair speed by 25 percent so you uh, if you 
do not have your um, repair kit, then, you know, you'll be able to actually repair your tracks faster, get into the action again, because being locked down, like in a position which doesn't benefit you is really annoying, especially if someone's trying to perma track you. And that's a that's kind of an aspect of the game that I uh, would really want to get uh, removed. Um, so that's why I try and limit it as much as possible. Now I think we've done enough talking about the British Bulldog, it's time to get into some gameplay and we'll go into that in just a second. So getting into some gameplay, we are here on Steps. Now this is a map that I actually quite enjoy, it's got a few different lanes that you can actually go down. Obviously for a heavy tank you primarily want to be going to around H3, that sort of area, the bottom left of the map is tend to be the place that heavy tanks do the best in. Now that's not always the case, you know, if you've got a gun depression, maybe you want to go over the right side, it's possible, you can use some of the ridge lines over there, but for me personally, the area that I usually go to is that J3 area, you know, the, that central bit um, down on the left. Now, in terms of, um, in this game, what am I going to do? It's a tier 7 game, it's quite a tier 7 heavy game, in fact, so there's quite a few tier 7s in the game. Obviously this armour works at tier 6 quite well, uh, coming up against tier 7s the armour profile doesn't work so well because the premium rounds on tier 7s are uh, more than enough to be able to go through the front of it and even when you angle, if people know the weak points and people are aiming for your lower plate which is a weak point on this tank is, is an area that you can get hit. Now you see what I'm doing here is I, I've come over and um, We've seen that VK that was there, and what you can do is, even when people go undetected, if you aim for the tracks when you first spot them, and when you first hit them, if you track them and pen them, or, or even if you just track them, if you hit them continuously in the track, you can gr basically farm their entire hit points uh, blind, so whether they go undetected or not, if you're managing to actually track them in the first two shots, so you track them, they'll repair obviously because they don't want to get hit again, and then you hit them again, what you can do is actually just keep them in place then because they've used their repair kit, there's no way of them possibly um, repairing their track before you reload for the next shot. That's something that I find a lot of people don't do, is actually fire blind, because when someone goes undetected doesn't mean that they're not there, it just means that someone hasn't spotted them within the last couple of seconds, and so that's one of the things that you want to be doing when you're playing in your various different tanks, is, is firing blind, because, you know, more than likely, 90%, uh, someone's going to be there, as we get pumped by artillery there for 200. Um, unfortunately, for... For me, artillery is a tank that tends to focus your big, slow British Bulldog, and yes, you are a pretty slow tank, I'm not going to lie. Now, we're focusing that broken tier 5 there, the Panzer V IV, probably, if not, the best tank tier for tier um, around here, and it's certainly a tank you don't want to be coming up against on a regular basis, because it's got a pretty good gun I'm not gonna lie it can ram you for probably half your health if it's going top speed and it's using all of the equipment as well and the perks that actually reduce your ramming damage if it's a ram build then yeah it's not a tank you want to be coming up against but coming back to the British Bulldog now you can see the turret actually moves fairly fast and the accuracy is really good in game and that's something that you want uh, on your tanks that are this slow. You don't want a tank that's slow and doesn't have the accuracy or the actual gun to be able to output your damage as an artillery round comes flying in there. Um, yeah, you want to be able to actually hit your opponents and that is what this tank does absolutely perfectly. You can see here we tried the free aim on the snake but unfortunately for us we didn't actually manage to pen him but we did tra like damage his track so you know it could help. And what you see here, I mean if you, if you notice in the top right hand corner is that we're actually getting spotted damage. Now that's something that this tank does very very well. Now you're not always getting spotting damage and if you put yourself in the wrong position obviously you're never going to get spotting damage. But for me, if you manage to get it in a position where you're just spotting some light tanks, um, obviously I know that there's a light tank to my left, but we're continuing to get this Tiger, who's probably the biggest threat uh, to us anyway. So, yeah, coming back to that, getting the spotting damage. Um, obviously, you want spotting and tracking, gets your marks up, um, or marks of excellence if you're going for those, which I tend to do when I'm playing my tier 6s, because it kind of keeps me a little bit entertained somewhat. I find playing against some of the, um, 
you know, playing tier 6 just to play is not something I particularly enjoy. But this tank was actually a tank where, you know, I thought I'll play it because everyone's going to get it. They'll want to see what the tank's like, how to play it, how to actually um, get involved with the tank and what the best setup would be. Um, so yeah, that's that's kind of where I decided to do this little review. And um, hopefully it kind of comes across well. You kind of see the best areas of the tank. You know, we're coming up against an enemy British Bulldog. We were getting penned fairly reliably. Um, and the one, the one thing that you do want to note is you see that I'm aiming for his cupola there. The top of the turret is pretty bad. I'm not going to lie. So if you can manage to get it, then that is perfect, and, and that's where you want to be aiming. Um, so yeah, I, I think that that's kind of an area of the tank that maybe is a little bit weak. Um, and if people know the weak points, you can have a bit of a tough time. Uh, but on the general, if you actually manage to, you know. Um, put yourself in a position to be able to actually angle and you're using your turret quite well you're like wiggling it um, just trying to bait the enemy into making a, a silly mistake where you know they just fluff their shot and it goes flying over you uh, then yeah this tank can be really really good as far as you know mobility you don't really have any so you're not going to be going anywhere anytime soon 20 kilometers an hour top speed is it worth putting the speed equipment on? You know, you can buff that by 20%, so you can go an extra 4 kilometers an hour, but realistically, that takes away your ability to spot, your reload, and you're going to be sacrificing a lot if you want to do that, so 4 kilometers an hour, I'll take the hit and just play it like a really, really slow tank. Uh, not something that I'd recommend, really, putting on the speed boost. I think it's only really effective on medium tanks or, or tanks that genuinely have a little bit of speed potential in the first place. Or maybe tanks that, you know, were were like kind of um, underpowered on their ho horsepower, where if they increase it, it could actually be quite beneficial. Now, in terms of uh, this gameplay, obviously, we've had not a bad one. We've got 1,700 spotting and 1,500 assist. That's not a bad game in the British Bulldog. I mean, it's not particularly the best game I've had. I've, the next one is probably um, the best damage game I've ever had um, in the British Bulldog. You know, I haven't played an inordinate amount of games in it, but I've learned kind of the ways that you should be playing it. Obviously, I haven't got a first mark, and usually that happens within the first 30 to 40 games when I play um, at Tier 6 anyway. And um, I'm kind of looking to three mark this tank maybe uh, in the near future anyway. Uh, I did purchase the snake bite, so that will be coming very soon. Another review. Obviously, there's a few reviews on the channel that you can actually have a look at if you really want to. Um, they'll be linked in the playlist in the description, so you can have a look at those um, should you wish to do that. Now, coming back to the British Bulldog, obviously, we've talked about the mobility, we've talked about the gun, um, we've talked about the armour, um, but what, what kind of play style should you be taking? Well... You kind of need to have a playstyle where you're aggressive, but not too aggressive to the point where you're coming up against five tanks all at once. You also don't want to be too out in the open. You don't want to put yourself in an open area of the map where light tanks or mediums can out-traverse you, get round you, and um, just leave you in a bit of a problematic situation. Obviously, if you play right, then you know you can make any tank work. But this tank can actually work for the majority of players, I feel like. And considering I thought it would be a pretty much a useless tier 6, that, you know, when it comes up against tier 8s, it's going to get penned. Now, that just isn't the case, because you can't meet tier 8s, for starters. And also, its armour actually works at tier 6. It can get really, really decent damage games. You can actually have really good spotting potential. It's just one of those tanks where you, you really feel rewarded when you have a good game and it's not too difficult to have those good games either so i guess that that's kind of a benefit now in terms of this replay i'm going to skip forward because it's basically hunting down the artillery who's decided he's going to try and win the game against four enemy actual tanks not artillery um yeah that doesn't really work out for it for him very well and you'll just see that in just a second um so yeah this tank can be really really good really really um useful and it's a, a tank that really can actually work very well and um as long as you play it right you know that's with most tanks but 
as long as you're you're choosing your ammunition correctly, if you're coming up against tier sevens that you aren't going to pen, then using those premium rounds as and when you need them is something you need to do. As we shut down the artillery at the end of the game. Now, obviously, that's not the best game anyone's ever going to have in the uh, British Bulldog. But certainly on World of Tanks, you know, it's not a bad one. We got 2,251 damage and 1,542 assist. Nearly 4,000 combined. I have had a game where I've got, I think, 5,000 combined um, in this, but I wasn't recording. So unfortunately for you guys, you won't be able to see that. But you can see we did make a little bit of silver as well. So 35,500 silver isn't a bad one. It's not to sniff your nose at. We fired quite a bit of premium as well. Unfortunately, if we didn't have a premium account, we would have lost 400 silver. So I guess it's good for those of you who have premium because, you know, you make the one and a half times extra silver. And if you don't fire too many premium rounds like we did in this game when we came up against certain different tanks, we probably didn't need them for every single tank that we came up against. But the APCR rounds do have that higher penetration and also the speed allows me to, you know, not have to worry about bouncing shots um, in clutch situations. Now the second gameplay that we have is on Prokhorovka, probably the worst map you could possibly get the British Bulldog on, very open, very able to get hit by artillery, you're not the fastest tank so you aren't going to be able to spot very many people, you're probably going to get outspotted, um, unfortunately we're playing at tier 8 because I was platooned as well with um, one of my platoon mates in the snake bite. That doesn't get preferential matchmaking, which means I am playing in a tier 8 game. That's not standard, so you cannot play that normally in this tank because it's preferential matchmaking. Um, but if you do come up against uh, tier 8s, you should know that your penetration on your premium rounds can be used effectively to actually have a couple of, of decent games. You see a dragon has gone there. And now if you look in the bottom right of our screen where the minimap is, unfortunately, our entire team is pretty much deciding that they're going to go up to the hill. Now that's something I really hate seeing on Prokhorovka. It's not the worst thing in the world, but certainly when you're trying to spot for your team, you're trying to have the best game you can. And when you're in a tier 6 and a tier 8 game, in a tier 6 heavy that basically has no armor because it's in a tier 8 game, um, you're playing against two dragons that are playing the midridge. Um, and your penetration on your standard rounds isn't reliable enough to go through the dragon's turret, then yes, you can have some uh, a little bit of a problem and it can definitely be frustrating to be able to play. Obviously, if you play it in the right way and this kind of gameplay is, is kind of telling you about what we're actually, um, what kind of playstyle you need to actually take when you're coming up against tanks in this um but you see, what we're doing here is just speculatively shooting uh, various different tanks. We we know that we're probably not going to hit them on the move, but you know, if if we can, that's a benefit. Um, but if we can't, it's not the worst thing in the world. As we hit the Tigers, Capola on the move, um, but it didn't pen anyway. So <laughs> it's one of those things that is a bit annoying um, when the RNG gives you enough and we hit it again there, um, but we didn't pen again, which is a big bit annoying. But we. We'll gloss over it because this game ends up actually being a really good one. Now, unfortunately, we don't have any sound because it, for some reason, messed up on my recording. So it didn't record the sound, unfortunately. Um, but what we do have is the gameplay. So you can actually see uh, what's special about it and uh, the sort of things that you can get up to in such a tank in a tier 8 game where you really think that you're not going to have a great game. So obviously my platoon mate is doing a good job of spotting the opponents that we're coming up against. Uh, our team, however, can't really be said because <laughs> they're all up the hill. You know, they're not moving. They're not actually progressing the flank. They're not really doing anything. You know, maybe they're getting a couple of shots into the dragon that's nearest them, but they will probably can't even spot them anyway. Now... You'll see what happens here is is we are trying to move back. We're trying to put bushes in the way in between us and the opponent. So we try not to get spotted. Obviously, that doesn't work every single time. And if any, one of their tanks decides to YOLO in and, and go into a position where um, they can actually hit us, then yeah, we, we're going to take some damage. But that's not the worst thing in the world. Um, obviously, you see the Stura and Meals moving up and, and we'll put a couple of shots into him. I should have probably loaded a HE round there to be able to get another one into him. Um, but unfortunately, I didn't do that. And so, you know, I get punished a little bit for it in terms of not being able to get as much damage as possible. 
Now, yes, you could say we've been camping, but it's it's effective camping. You know, it's it's something where, yes, I could have gone up the hill, but would I have been any more effective going up the hill as to here? No. If I went over the right side, I'd have been on my own against all of these tier 7 and tier 8 tanks, which would not have gone well uh, at all. You know, I'd been pretty much a three shot for every single tier 8 in the game. And certainly when there's four of them or five of them around, not really going to have the best game ever. So what I decided is I'm just going to support my uh, platoon mate in the snake bite, just put in some shots as and when I can uh, into the people that are trying to YOLO. You see the dragon here is just plowing rounds into my uh, teammate. And obviously we're going to keep plowing rounds into him because he's uh, made the mistake of just coming in and we're going to try and shut him down. Now, obviously, uh, this is kind of one of those situations where everything went almost perfect. Um, we're just basically able to farm tanks without getting spotted, without basically being able to get hit ourselves. And, you know, we've dealt 2,200 damage in the in pretty much um, five minutes since the game started against tier 8 tanks that we were more than likely never really going to be able to pen. Now, I make a bit of a misplay here. I fired there. I really shouldn't have probably fired. We are getting hit from behind. Obviously, the Black Prince is firing at us, and we're going to try and move away as fast as possible to be able to avoid any more shots. Yet again, I make a little bit of a misplay in the tank, and that is actually turning outside on. Obviously, um, don't really need to uh, do that, and when I've only got AP rounds against a Black Prince, it's not going to end up too good for me. Um, you see, we're aiming at the cupola of the Black Prince because that's probably the only area on the front of that tank that we're able to actually pen. Um, obviously, if we hit the lower plate, maybe we'll be able to, but it is a very, very slim shot, as is the cupola. Now, one thing that I forgot to mention throughout both of these replays is that the gun depression is really, really frustrating to be able to use. You pretty much get super gun depression over the side of your tank, but when you're actually front um, when you're facing the front with your gun depression, um, you basically don't get any. And when I say you don't get any, you pretty much get like three degrees because you're so long and you're so kind of like almost like tog esque um, with how long you are and, and how basically um, effective your armor is. So, you know, you have to be able to um, turn side on sometimes to get that gun depression, um, which is fantastic if you can do that but it's not necessary um, in every case. Now, you see what I'm trying to do is just get up as high as possible to try and get a shot on the Tiger P, but unfortunately we're not able to do that. My platoon mate does pick it up the damaging or destructing shot on him and, and we can progress now. It's six versus four, which is so surprising considering their whole team pretty much came up against us and when we took them all out um, very, very quickly with the help of the GW Panther helping. Um, and, you know, there's still plenty of tanks left alive that haven't been spotted and hopefully we can have some, some good games. You know that the T-77 is over to my left and if he comes up against me, I am more than likely going to get taken out. So I've got to be a, play the situation a bit, a bit carefully anyway when I play against him. Now what you see is my platoon mate is actually just trying to out-traverse the Audas. Um, he gets hit by the Audas, but the he low-rolls so much that he leaves my platoon mate on 26 damage, um, or hit points I should say. And uh, yeah, very, very lucky game for him. Um, and you'll see just how how brilliantly of a game he actually had at the end of this one um, with regards to the amount of spotting damage he actually got, because... He was pretty much the only one spotting the right-hand side of the map uh, for everyone, um, and no one was even close enough to be able to get any. I see what we're trying here is just shooting at the T-77, who has obviously got a rush of crap to the brain because he just YOLO'd in when he could have used his gun depression and taken out a couple of our tanks before the inevitable happened. Now, obviously, that game was pretty you know, mediocre in terms of the way that the opponents played and the way that our team played. It was very, very situational and it certainly isn't a game that you'll probably likely have. But you can see as a platoon, we managed to do 4,000 damage and we also managed to pick up 8,000 assisted between us. So that is a crazy amount. Obviously, my platoon mate getting 7,700 spotting in a snake bite on Prokhorovka is crazy, 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 crazy. Picking up 3,100 damage in a tier 8 game in the British Bulldog is also no mean feat. Um, 
yeah, it's it, it was a really, really good game. And overall, we had some particularly good games when we played. Um, there's a few other games that I had, but these two kind of featured two aspects of the tank and the way that you can play it. Hopefully it came across quite well and you understand how the British Bulldog will play if you decide to actually go and play it after you've picked it up as part of the free challenge or earn operation on World of Tanks console. Hopefully you did enjoy the video. If you did, make sure to hit the like button. There are plenty more reviews on the channel that you can go and watch if you want to. There will be a playlist on screen for you to have a look at now and um, in my most recent video as well if you want to watch that depending on which kind of thing you like enjoy watching. Other than that, hope you guys have a great rest of your day and I hope to see you in the next video. Goodbye.